This lecture is on primitive counting. Early numeral systems fall into five broad categories. Simple counting, simple grouping, a multiplicative group system, a cipher numeral system, or the modern positional numeral system. We will look at each of these in turn. With simple counting, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence with objects nearby, with stones or sticks, fingers or toes. Imagine an early shepherd counting the sheep as they go by by collecting stones and dropping the stones at his feet. Simple counting is still present in some languages. Some society might have the phrase one hand and thumb stand for the number six. And our base 10 is probably due to our simple counting at some point. Next above simple counting would be simple grouping. In this case, you replace groups of objects by a single symbol. Roman numerals are the basic example. The symbol V would stand for 5, X for 10, and so on. The Egyptians had a hieroglyphic system that was simple grouping. There would be a symbol for 10, a symbol for 100, and a symbol for 1,000. And many other cultures had a simple grouping system. This is the next natural step after simple counting. Let's look at the Egyptian numeral system. Notice that one could put down 10 dash marks to stand for 10, 10 sticks, but you could also use this cup symbol as a 10. A coil of rope would stand for 10 tens or 100. A lotus flower would stand for 1,000 and so on. The Babylonians also, at one point, had a simple grouping system. Notice in the left column, we're counting up to 10 just by putting more and more marks on the page until we have nine of these symbols standing for nine. But then when we jump to 10, we have a new symbol. It looks a little bit like an I looking to the right or the letter A on its side. And so we, count to, we can count to 100 using two different symbols. One symbol stands for one and the other for 10. There are multiplicative grouping systems. In this case, some type of symbol or marker is used to indicate multiplying by the base. Let me show you an invented example. We could use our current number system, but we can use the letter T to stand for a multiply by 10, and the letter H to stand for a multiply by 100. So if you wanted to write out what we now call 327, you could write out 3H, 2T, and a 7. The order is not important. You could write out a 7, 2t, 3h, or 2t, 7, 3h. In each case, the h means multiply by 100 and the t means multiply by 10. Or an even more primitive form, you could have three marks followed by an h that would stand for 300, two marks followed by a t that would stand for 10, two tens, and then seven marks to stand for seven. So 327 might be written like this. A Chinese-Japanese system was multiplicative. There are cipher numeral systems. In this case, you have a particular base, usually 10, and you have symbols for 1, 2, 3, and so on, and then new symbols for the base, twice the base, three times the base, and so on, and new symbols then for the base squared, twice the base squared, etc. Let me show you a simple example. This is invented, but let's use our current letters, alphabet, and have A through I stand for the numbers 1 through 9. J stands for 10, K for 20. Notice now we're jumping by 10 so that L is 30, M is 40. And then S is 100, and we begin jumping by 100. T is 200, U is 300, up to Z is 800, and I threw in the at symbol for 900. If you use a cipher numeral system, you can you take your name, for example, and it would be a number. It would stand for a particular sum. Replace each letter in, say, your last name by the appropriate number and add them up. The Greeks had a cipher numeral system. But the modern system is a positional numeral system. In this case, like the multiplicative system, um, you have a multiplier, but it is position. It's important where the number is. Our modern Hindu Arabic system, base 10, was introduced into Europe in the Middle Ages. 
The Babylonians had a positional numeral system that used base 60. Uh, many societies had positional numeral systems. Most of the time they were base 10, but there were some with base 5 or base 20. The Mayans had a positional numeral system, base 20, although 360 played a role. Any positional numeral system, because the multiplier depends upon position, has to have a symbol for zero. Notice the symbol for zero in the Mayan uh, numeral system. Our numeral system is positional, base 10. We got that from the Hindu Arabic societies. Unless you work with a computer. And if you work with a computer, then you're going to use something like base 2 or some power of 2. Octal is base 8, hex is base 16. In general, if you're working with a computer, you're using base 2. So 1, 0 stands for the number 2. Next time, we will look at the Egyptian and Babylonian societies as we move toward the Greek age.